Going live. An observation that okay. Okay. we're going live. Welcome back. Tim Alexander, our historian, geopolitical military analyst. And there's lots of analysts out there. I hear some on different blogs and radio shows. But I believe that Tim's analysis of the military, geopolitical, is probably closer to the facts of what's really on the ground happening than anybody else. Tim, we have some really strange things going on. And it's it's approaching the, the day of the long knives against Obama. He has so many screw-ups now, converging on him now. I, you know, the thing is... If he gets past Benghazi Gate, if he gets past now the, uh, the, 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 you know, the subpoenaing all the records of all these journalists, if he gets past all the crap that he's been doing, he basically is a functionary dictator right on the spot. Well, uh, I, Obama needs to be removed, but uh, not just him, the, the entire regime. Today on the AP Gate, uh, they were actually listening to conversations in the House of Representatives cloakroom, and that's where a lot of congressmen kind of gather and so forth. And, and really, you know, there's you don't do oh some things. Yeah, uh, this, this is like reading a Watergate. We, 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 uh, we copied the, the the British system to some extent, and the principle. Uh, and I've I've said in the House of Lords and uh, yeah, as Earl Sterling, and the principle. Uh, in the British Parliament, which transferred to our Congress, is that members uh, of of the Parliament have immunity against arrest and government intimidation, and they have immunity from what they say on the floor. In other words, you the government may not mess with members of Parliament or peers of the realm. Same thing in the, the United States. Senators and congressmen have constitutional immunity against arrest, with a couple exceptions. And their their mail, their communications, their offices are, are sacrosanct. You don't mess with them because it's a separation of powers. And Obama even crossed that line, and the the people around Obama. I I, I say Obama. Everybody says Obama. It's Obama's much more a front yeah. man. He, he, he he's reads, basically uh, said they, the whole. They taught him to read yeah. the teleprompter very well. It's the people behind Obama and around Obama. And they, they're, they're so arrogant, and they have such total, utter disrespect for America, the American system, American values, and the American Constitution, that they, they, they think nothing of trashing everything. So they've gone far. But the, the, beyond that, I always like to say, step back from the, the trees. Let's go back to the forest. Step way back. There are a couple things going on right now, and this Obama thing is one of them. The other has to do with the Middle East. But it's very interesting to look at what the mainstream media is doing or not doing, because you now have five or six companies that control the American mainstream media, and they're all globalist-owned and Zionist-run. And the knives are out for Obama. Now... And and it's it's like somebody threw a switch very recently, and well, for, if first you thing look you can say right off the board, the, all of a sudden to, this guy who was like Slick Willie, the Teflon president, nothing stuck to him. All of a sudden, wham! He's getting it from all sides. The House of Representatives, two thirds of all their committees are investigating the Obama administration. Now, is this a build up? Well, it partially is, but you know they've gotten by with everything, and now all of a sudden it's like we've done a one eighty. And that signals to me that something perhaps either big with the Obama administration is coming, they're going to sacrifice him uh, to impeachment or something, or uh, he's receiving pressure on some other issue, which may well be the Middle East. Well, I think here's what, here's what, there's two things he's did, done that I know have ticked off the globalists. The first is he's very much anti-Israel, anti-Jewish, number one. Number two, he blocked the XL pipeline. And even through Gerald Salenti and other sources, that really ticked off the globalist uh, oil barons bankers. So those two things, being anti-Israel and literally putting uh, Israel and saying, oh, we'll partition the city, we'll partition the state, we're going to put Israel in a dangerous place. And now, now Obama is even supporting Al, uh, Al Nursa Al Qaeda with weapon system that can be used against Israel. Our mortal enemies, Al Qaeda, Obama is publicly supporting. The man is out of yeah, his mind. But I think Al Qaeda was largely our creation, too, though. It, it is, but the problem is, is that they're a bad dog, but they can still bite you. 
And the problem oh, is, they are the, a bad the, dog. And I mean, look at this idiot that uh, killed a, uh, a Syrian soldier, and then proceeded to cut open his chest, took his liver and his heart out, and ate part of his heart. And he's admitted it, and uh, his, uh, it, it, his fellow well, troops support him in that. We talked about this with uh, Walid Shabbat and Theodore Shabbat in their latest book, Islam: The Case for Islamophobia. It's the public academic Egyptian hierarchical Muslim academics who have basically said that human sacrifice and human cannibalism is acceptable under Islam. we got to get a reality check and realize we have a Muslim president, we have globalist bankster leaders that are hell-bent on destroying the Constitution, we have Obama who's finally in the grip of something that if they don't take him down it means the Republican Party are not doing their job, he needs to go down quickly, and it doesn't just mean removing Obama, it means removing Hillary Clinton, it means people need to go to jail. It's all the corruption rates right through our so-called uh, bureaucracy. It's everywhere. In fact, there's a battle between different branches of the government. I think we've actually had a battle between the FBI and CIA. I think there's different branches of the government that are actually at war with each other internally in our government right now. And I think our military, who are literally completely, if you want to call it, scoured of some of the senior leadership, including... Uh, our leadership in the Mideast, were removed because they disagreed with Obama's policies, including this ambassador who, according to Michelle Shostodowsky, was removed after they sent 300 al-Qaeda to kill him or to, at the very least, exchange him for the blind sheikh so that the blind sheikh from Egypt could go back after the FBI set up 9-11-1 in 1992. So what we have is an incredibly evil government under Obama. It's not just him. It's an entire regime. So he'll say, I didn't know about the about the AP Newswire <laughs> yeah, things. I, mean, I, I, I saw a picture today on the... You know, bloody, bloody, bloody. Yeah, the, the UT, the, the Union Tribune in San Diego. I looked at the picture of Obama, and it looks like the guy looks like a kid... Mom, I didn't have my hand in the cookie jar, and he looks so innocent. It's like, this guy's a son of a bitch. He is a, a hellion from the ninth ring of Hades. He is a senior demon like the screw tape letters. You know, this guy is like, yes, Satan, I will do your bidding. You know, you're, it's like you're you're, in, you're insulting demons now. Right? Yeah, exactly. In fact, he used that joke based on the Bible movie series that came out, saying that people thought he looked like Satan, and he said that's an insult to Satan. <laughs> This is Obama saying it. He's so narcissistic. He's so narcissistic. He even glories in the fact that he's evil. Well, uh, that should really be surprising because many of these people are literally satanic, uh, yeah. and and they are put in power because they are satanic and because they have uh, the, the. We think the the the, the sad thing about uh, what democracy has marked into under the 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 this money and the pope uh, made some interesting comments about the uh the corruption of money and the the, the dictatorship of the economy um but what what we have is this this policy that people think uh, Obama is running things. No, the people no. behind Obama are running yeah, things. He, he, Obama he's just is the, the front man. Obama is the wind up toy. They stand him in front of a podium, and 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 he reads off the teleprompter, and he learned how to do that very well. He knows that he has to operate within certain parameters, and most of them have been like that. The Kennedys weren't. Uh, Carter got off the plantation, and uh, so they, they made sure he didn't get a second term. Um, and Nixon thought after he won the big uh, the landslide for his re-election that he could actually be president, and they managed uh -huh. to take him out real quick. Reality check, right? Yeah, well, I, you have, it, it's all about money, and you have a small group of families that, that literally control the printing of money in the United States and all over the world. These are the global banking cartel people, and they run things, not us, and not the yeah, person exactly. in the White House. Exactly. And we need to excise all of this tumor and secondaries from the government, not just Obama. Better we're going to die. Yeah, we're, we're in a dying cancer mode right now.
Well, Tim, you know, as I mentioned in the first hour with um, John, with um, Jerry Strybos, if you're going to deal with this really bad news, and I found out the hard way when I got my blood pressure off into our orbit last week, and I got it back under control now by taking nutraceuticals and cardivite so and putting my uh, soma pulse directly over my thoracolumbar spine to reset my autonomic nervous system, and also doing a lot of prayer, handing it over to Jesus, handing it over to God and saying, look, God, I'm completely freaked out by what I see happening, and I see the news tainment, the, the cartoon news network, the faux news network, the so-called pundits out there, and, of course, an apathetic public that are basically diseducated, think that they're knowledgeable and have no clue how crazy things are or how much crazier it can get very quickly. We're not minutes to midnight. We're not even seconds. We're milliseconds to midnight. Yeah, well, the monster of Armageddon is pounding at the door saying, let me in, let me in. I'm your long-lost brother, and, uh, you know, please just open the door a little bit, you know. Right, well, the, we see that right now. Here, here's it, the it, thing. The, the other yeah. the other mm-hmm. issue, which we just talked about on, on break, but the other issue here is the Middle East. And we have seen uh, over the last couple of weeks, uh, last week in particular, a massive number of summits at the highest level. You have Netanyahu flying to Beijing, and the, the, the Chinese making an announcement while he's in Beijing saying basically, go to hell, uh, that we support uh, Assad in Syria. You have, uh, then he flies to Russia, and basically the Russians say the same thing, only in, in a more polite tone. Uh, it's very difficult for the public uh, or even a, a legitimate uh, analyst or commentator to, to, to know what's going on because, you know, uh, their meetings are done in a closed room with very few people present, and the government's put out the usual song and dance routine, uh, which tells you nothing. Okay, you have the the uh, Prime Minister of the United Kingdom flying to Washington and meeting with Obama and the administration. You have the U.S. Secretary of State flying all over. You have various people uh, at the foreign ministry level flying all over, and the, and, and the U.N. involved, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But now all of a sudden... There's very little news about the Middle East. There was the news about the the, the monster that you, cut you, out the guy's heart. But, and, by and the way, when but, that happens, Tim, you know and I know when that happens, when it gets quiet, that the powers that be are deciding what the fate will be, and yeah. literally really bad stuff is at the doors. In other words, we're talking Probably. about an exchange it, it, it of advanced weapons. Yeah. It is possible that they've decided to back down for a while. Now, uh, the, there is a, the, uh, a very recent Difka article that, and of course you have to understand, as John Moore says, Difka is the posting board for the Mossad. And that article says that the, the Saudis have now become convinced that the war in Syria is basically over, that the Syrians are kicking the hell out of the, the foreign mercenaries, and that the false flag bombing in, in, uh, in uh, Turkey did not accomplish its goals. The Turks aren't, aren't uh, going into, you know, they're not widening the war. And basically it's, it's according to well, the, 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 the Saudis... And the Iranians have now sat down to begin to talk to one another about how to to well, solve their their mutual problems in the Middle East, because the Saudis are now convinced that the the route towards a war with Iran through Syria is not going to work. Now, is well, that true? Yeah. Well, uh, probably not. Yeah. But but at this point in time, you can't be totally certain. Well, well what I see is people, people, that, there's two, that two people on, on the that, door. Is yeah. Armageddon. Well, we have the Syrians. People should look back at the history. Syria was, in a sense, colonized by the French, but they were never defeated. The British tried to defeat them. The two most, if you want to call it, vicious armies on the earth, going back through umpteen thousands of years, are the Russians and the Syrians. If you go back to the ancient Assyrian Empire, they were kicked butt, okay? And those people are the toughest people on earth. If they think they're just going to mull right over them, they're crazy. They're not. Well, They're highly you, trained you know, army. You, they got Russian. The, the Omanis and the Saudis have been spending literally billions and billions of oil dollars to hire uh, a wide variety of people, including some of the scummiest uh, 
of the uh, Muslim a, community on the face of this earth. They're just by getting the mowed down by the uh, Syrians. The guy's heart or part of his heart. And they've been sending these people in with their AK-47s and their RPGs and so forth and saying, well, go kill the Serbs. Now, of course, Serious. they're Serious. burning churches. They're gorging the eyes out of priests. Uh, they're they're raping. They're they're killing children. They're doing horrific things. And when they capture these uh, the Syrian troops, they often summarily execute them. Well, what did the Nazis learn when they tried that at the Battle of the Bulge? Uh, when the Nazis machine gunned a bunch of our boys who had been captured, word gets out. And if you're a soldier and you hear that if you surrender, you're going to get a bullet in the back of the head, guess what? Why surrender? Go down with your boots on. Kill a few right. of them. That's human nature. Okay? Right. And, and, and the Syrian army is well, well trained. They're tough. They know how to fight as an army. And These they also know basically if they don't win, they die. They don't know how to fight as an army. Right. And if you see the videos of them, you know, they're hiding, they're shooting up in the air, they're, 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 they're not aiming their shots. Anybody can stand there with an AK-47 or a fully automatic yes. rifle and fire a 30 round clip any damn fool can do that but that 30 uh, yeah. round clip uh, you, uh, for one Jim, of those fools uh, to hit somebody is more luck than anything uh, it takes Jim, a I, I want to get i want to make a t-shirt really go in door to door and kill the enemy well, I want to I want to have take a collection for T-shirts. We want to send to the Syrian Free Army. By the way, Al Qaeda's army, Obama's army, NATO's army, and the T-shirt's going to say, "An AK-47 is not an air guitar." <laughs> <laughs> There's a, a famous video. I have to be careful how I say this on the air. There's a famous video where a guy is demonstrating how American street gangsters, uh, street hoodlums, fire their pistols. And they put them up in the air, and, of course, they, they, they turn them on their side. And then with their other hand, they, they, they grab the family jewels, and they shoot up in the air. And they're very lucky if they kill anybody. And, of course, if they hit somebody, it's probably an innocent bystander because they, they're obviously, you know, shooting wildly. That's basically how uh, the so-called free Syrian army, uh, they're, first off, they're not Syrian. Ninety-five percent or more of them are not Syrians, and they're mercenaries. And, I don't know how you know, Obama can have that. A uh, hundred thousand dollars a head off them, but yeah, I don't know how Obama can make statements where we know that we've actually trained in Jordan. We've given chemical weapons training to the quote Syrian Free Army, which isn't Syrian. We have even uh, supported Al Nusra Al Qaeda. Even among the the uh, crazies in the Syrian Free Army, they're nervous about Al Nusra being involved, and we directly support them and say, now we're going to give them heavy weapons. I'm going to tell you what will happen. Here, here's a scenario I see coming. If, this is the facts, if in the next 30 days, Iran is uh, thinks that they're going to have an attack, an air attack on any on Qum or the other places, you're going to see a barrage of weapons from Hezbollah come down on Israel. You're going to see a firefight where the Israeli army, if they try to invade Lebanon, is going to die. And you're going to see the Akan Cypress on a cruise missiles take our carrier groups to the bottom. Joining us, Chris Harris, that's his radio name. He's one of the top nuclear safety experts in the world. Uh, Chris, um, what's the... Li ah, we're still working on getting Chris. Okay, uh, let me tell you what I see happening in terms of Fukushima Daiichi. We talked about this in the last hour with uh, jo John, our inventor developer of Neutrodyne. And I see a, a converging series of what I call perfect storms from hell. And I like to call it the Hell's Kitchen Menu. And now, we've talked about this. That's my term. I, I demand that you give me credit for that. I, that was one I. The, the I think we co developed it, actually. I think that's, great twisted that's minds Tim's think idea. alike. <laughs> well, I, Tim, believe it or not, I think we both co developed it at the same time. Oh, well, like we're, how like could we're, you not? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, so, anyway, so, so things are. 
uh, over the top nuts. There's nothing being done about Fukushima. After that earthquake, uh, two months ago, we had a surge of radiation for three times background for six to eight weeks. And for the first five days, it was five times background. We now are starting to show weird syndromes all around the northern hemisphere of radio, due to radioiodine, uh, thyroid failure, needle anal hypothyroidism, increased strokes, and we call it cerebral apoplexy in Japan of 3,500%, which means you're not going to live long enough to have a uh, cancer. You're going to die of a stroke or heart attack caused by radioisotope-induced mitochondrial failure, or basically endotheliitis where your endothelial walls of your arteries are in spasm and basically acute stroke heart attack and vascular disease so uh chris what's happening with fukushima what's going on since they've appointed this new uh person director of the nuclear regulatory commission to replace jazco uh mcfarland i guess is her name what's really going on in terms of the nrc what's happening in fukushima uh, how nuts is it and where is it going well dr bill it, uh, the article i sent you is called Post Fukushima, The New Normal. So yeah, I know. I, I have that right here. The New yeah. Normal. And really hidden within that article, uh, if you really dig into it, it's uh, basically we need to take action, but let's be careful that we're not going to step on too many toes when we take take this kind yeah, of action. Yeah, yeah. Here, here's the article. I'm going to post yeah, this article, Professional that. Reactor Operator Society. The Yeah, that's what this article came from. Live after Fukushima, quote, the new normal, end quote, prepared remarks of NRC Chairman Allison M. McFarland at the Nuclear Energy Institute, NEI, Nuclear Energy Assembly, May 14, 2013, Washington, D.C. Basically what she's saying is we are going to tenderly walk over the toes of the nuclear industry, even if they're killing all life on Earth. We're not going to do an adequate or, or supervision or engineering reanalysis. We're basically going to pretend that Fukushima never really happened. Is that right? Dr. Bill, I often am amazed about how, how quickly, not only do you get it, but how, how quickly you internalize it and able to put it more eloquently than I could possibly put it. You're right on the money. So yeah. yes, This is very right. disturbing. We have basically a socio-psychopath who pretend that they're going to head the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, they get rid of JASCO, who actually had some cojones physically as well as, as journalistically, who was asking tough questions and basically said, what are we doing? Nothing. Not only there, but here in America where there's a risk that there's a number of reactors within extreme uh, weather zones, within extreme fault line zones that could actually lose containment, and we've found lots of new ways with reactors that are virtually identical to the ones in Fukushima, which, by the way, you did research on for the Koreans at KEPCO, that they're freaked out by the fact that they have similar kinds of problems that could make their reactors lose containment or control the reactor, and there's lots of new ways now we know that these reactors can break down. Just like San Onofre, which we talked about, which now, according to this whistleblower, 22 years in the industry, the, uh, at the reactor as an engineer, he stated on public television just last week that if this reactor is not uh, shut down carefully, it could go critical, even if it's not turned on before the end of the year. If they turn it on, it's a guarantee it will go critical and will have a massive radiation release that could affect over 20 million Californians. Yeah, and that fellow Include. was talking about, oh, I'm sorry, the, the fellow was talking about a catastrophic failure of really all the tubes that would take uh, right. a good portion of them to just crumble. And, and really, that's what we're trying to understand. We're trying to understand the failure mechanism of these tubes, which we don't understand yet, and that's why that San Onofre... Let, let, let me tell you what my understanding is, because I understand laminar non-Newtonian flow, I understand uh, nuclear physics, etc., and I'll give you my understanding. Number one, they added additional tubes to this faceplate system, the seal system, and when they added the additional tubes, the uh, tube design allowed the tubes, because of differential laminar flow of, of what's called super-pressurized steam that flows in laminar flows, it created vibrations in the network of tubes that made them literally smack against each other. That vibration made the tubes literally start to separate from their, if you want to call it their seals, and so there was no containment between the superheated cool, uh, cooling t- uh, flow from the nuclear reactor and the water that's supposed to be external, and as a result, they lost containment. And that loss of containment, if you turn it on, even at 70% of power, is virtually guaranteeing that the tubes will just rupture against their seals as they're smacking against each other. And within hours or days, we're going to have a radiation release with massive evacuations of millions of Californians. That's what's going well, on. Gee, I hope you're wrong about that. 
No, no, I'm not absolutely right. And this is something no, I've please. researched. No, right. I am freaked out day and night. The reason why my blood pressure went up into orbit is not only that, we have the maniac in chief in the White House trying to start a nuclear war in the Middle East, which is why the news is now going blank. We have the bond market about to be blown out as they drop $400 billion worth of, of paper money and gold to blow the, to drive people out of the gold market, which is people aren't stupid, so everywhere they'll be buying gold, even if though they take possession in two months. We have everywhere now is into the inflatocracy. They're all inflating money like crazy. We have Russia and China telling Obama, even think sideways about starting an invasion or attacking or putting an airspace thing over Syria. We're going to have a nuclear war. We oh, are so uh, close Dr. to... Nicole, I, I, I forgot to tell you that, the, uh, according to Tithko, the uh, one of the things that Putin was going to tell the Russians is uh, if you deliver the S-300 air defense system that the Iranians have already paid for, we will take it out. Uh, this is what Obama said you mean to paper. Putin. We will take it out before yeah. they're installed. Well, the Russians had just delivered it, and so when he got there, it was uh, too late, Charlie. We've already uh, delivered yeah, no, 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 this is a threat from Obama or from John Kerry. Who gave the threat? No, this was a threat from uh, Netanyahu to the Russians and the Russians. Who the hell is uh, Netanyahu to, to threaten the Russians? Is he out of his mind? Yes. The, the He's out of his mind. Yes. He needed to listen. Let me explain to you, the best physicists on Earth are Russian. They have built their system, not because they had as much money as America, they had built their system on slaying the dragon, which is the American military-industrial complex. We've got an out-of-date navy with giant area carriers that can be taken out by Russian Alexander hypersonic cruise missiles, which we cannot evade with our phalanx anti-aircraft system. We have our ships sitting there with Hoot super cavitation torpedoes, which we can't stop. They're literally missiles the flowing through. Which the Iranians have copied and, and built their own now, by the way. Right. By the way, the Iranians have, have six different versions of different types of drones, including ones like ours. They can not only surveillance, but also bring weapon systems. They have the Russian Russian biopreparate advanced biological weapons systems, the Iranians and Syrians, and they're also sitting on Jeroboam's super gun. I mean, if we start a war there, they might not nuke but Damascus, the Israelis. But most people don't realize, and I've talked to people like David Rubin, who's actually in Shiloh, in northern Israel, and I'm going to have him on the show in the next week or so. He said if we nuke Damascus, all of northern Israel will be radioactive as hell. They can't nuke Damascus. If they do, most of Israel will be uninhabitable. Well, they Just have to use a neutron. It's 10 miles from the border. Uh, weapon, but the point is, uh, it's a mad, a mutually assured destruction. You don't go down the road to having a, a major war when the other guy has a mad against you. It, it's, right. it's like putting a, a gun to your own head and squeezing the trigger. It's suicide. You don't go there. But well, uh, I can tell you, when, 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 when Netanyahu makes this kind of threat... There. And then when he, when, he, when he bombs, literally, <coughs> by the way, the report is, whatever bomb they dropped on these, uh, you know, sheep farm and the so-called munitions dump, etc., several hundred uh, Syrian senior, highly trained military were turned to ashes. They dropped battlefield nukes on the Syrians. That's what they did. Yeah. They did a nuclear attack already, and Syria didn't respond. They're using everything to provoke a war. Welcome back, and uh, you mentioned a very important comment, Chris, when we're on the break, that this uh, letter is literally an argument against sequestration. They allow all the money in the world, and they refused to even listen to one program or do one thing that we recommended, which is common sense. I know as a, with a background in nuclear physics, as an occupational environmental doctor working in nuclear reactors, taking care of employees in Savannah River, which makes all our nuclear plutonium detonators, a reactor south of Chicago and the Rocky Flats, I can tell you with authority, not just journalistic authority, but medical and nuclear and chemical authority, that these assholes, and that's the best word I can call them, at the Nuclear Regulatory Commission specifically removed JASCO who was doing his job, put in McFarland so they could soft soap it. Now they're going to be sequestered so they'll even do less than nothing. This is sickening. It's sickening, but it's, a, it, it's the entire regime, the entire species of the monster that has been created around Obama, and it's not just Obama. Obama is a dysfunctional icon at the center, so you can hate his guts, but it really is the entire system around him, from the NRC to the AP Newswire garbage to the Benghazi Gate to the supplying arms to Al-Qaeda 
to the printing of $85 billion of money going directly to bail out more banks so they can speculate on the derivatives market, to everything that's blowing out the value of the dollar so the dollar is basically going down like a rocket and people say, oh, look at the stock market, it's going up. It's like, you don't understand up and down. If you're flying upside down and you feel like you're going really, really fast, you may actually be heading toward the ground. The problem is we're heading toward the ground, as they say, it's not the falling that hurts, it's the stopping. And we're going to have a day of stopping here coming very soon. The uh, part of the big part of the problem, guys, is we have this culture that has developed over the last few decades of spin, and spin is a fancy way of saying lying. And yeah. and these clowns in the 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 District of Crooks, the District of Columbia, think that they can go out and if they shovel some malarkey at the public, they've done something, and then they actually believe. The, the lies, the BS. Well, that, that's that how bad, bad their sociopathy is. That they actually are so narcissistically and satanically, they don't even try to even lie well anymore. They have so little respect for the public, they don't care if they lie about Benghazi Gate or the AP Newswire. They'll even say it's a conspiracy theory like Obama when they got a confession. They get a confession, you know, for somebody that says, hey, we were targeting in the IRS, and somebody says, well, we're going to investigate those allegations. It's not a friggin' allegation, moron. When you have a confession, it's now a fact. There's a hell of a big difference in a court of law or in any place where you're asking for the truth. Obama is a, is, a, is, a, is a blotch on humanity. He's a monster. And he's a perfect example of not only him, but the entire regime. And if America goes down, it's not just America. It's Canada. It's Europe. It's China. It's Russia. We're heading toward a world conflict with an economic war brewing now, with a currency war. And every nation now is going to this inflationary spiral. Uh, every nation's bracing itself for an airborne plague. Every nation knows that something horrible is coming. You know, as it says, something wicked this way comes. Well, guess what? We need to repent. I have to say today, I'm no longer going to let my blood pressure go into orbit. I'm going to pray every day that I feel freaked out. I'm going to hand it over to Jesus. I'm going to say, if we don't pray, if we don't fall on our face and cry before the Most High God, if we in America don't say, Jesus, come quickly, because we've screwed up. And we're all going to die shortly, and humanity will be blotched from the from from mankind. And a thousand years from now, there may be a few remnants of some, you know, non-decayed structures to indicate that mankind was here, but there'll be very little other evidence, because that's how evil, how narcissistically apathetic, how sickening mankind is, because it doesn't have the guts to face it to the truth that we've done evil by tolerating evil. By tolerating Obama, I think he's a new messiah. By tolerating IRS or people like Nancy Pelosi that says, we, don't we, we read the book about the Bushes. We tolerated Slick Willie. We well, tolerated Slick Willie. This clown well, Slick Willie was the, was We've the, been doing this for a long we, time, but it gets worse. Stop it. You have a cumulative buildup of, of, of evil and. Well, it's, it's the end of the road. This is the end of the road. 2013 is the turning point. America is not dying. America is dead. It needs to be resurrected. It needs to be, you know, as, as the body stinketh. We are approaching the third day of the death of America. If we don't literally have the Most High God, have Christians, and by the way, it'll only be Christians that are going to do this, because nobody else thinks they need to repent. They think, America's so strong, it'll never fall. It'll be like ancient Israel. They're never going to fall. Our armies are so powerful, these Syrians, no one can defeat us. And it was like, it was like the, the banquet room there with the King of Babylon. Uh, you know, many, many tickled perries. Your kingdom is found uh, in, in the balance and found wanting, and tomorrow you shall die. That's what it said, and it was written in Farsi on the wall by a great hand, by an angelic hand, saying, you're screwed, buddy. Your kingdom's finished. And we don't get it in America. We think we can't fall. We can't ever need to go to the bottom of the Persian Gulf. We can't have our cities bombed with literally not just one or two bombings, but dozens. We can't have biological weapons released all over our cities and locked down everywhere. We can't end up not going to the theater because we're afraid of dying, bleeding from every orifice from an airborne plague. Oh, no, that's not going to happen. Well, let me tell you, people out there, unless we repent right now, not tomorrow, not next week. We don't fall down and pray to the Most High God today to beg God to intervene in love and say, give us the faith. Because if you, you don't get, by the way, people don't get the faith on their own. They don't say, you know what you do? You have to beg God for the faith. You have to cry out because you believe that God loves you and he will give you the faith that he'll intervene. But I don't believe that I have the faith by myself. It only comes from the Creator. 
And when we beg God, when we repent before God, when we turn from our evil ways, when we speak out against evil, like against abortion, like this guy Gosnell, against the monster Obama and supporting infanticide after birth, even as an Illinois senator, against Hillary Clinton, who lied with a bold arrogance about Benghazi, with all these people lying like Susan Rice, we have to finally get so disgusted, we absolutely will not tolerate that, including our Republican politicians who won't do the damn job and remove this Obama tumor and all of their functionaries from the government. And if we don't do it, this is the end, not only of America, this is the end of mankind. Your comments, gentlemen. Well, you know, the House of Representatives has the constitutional authority to indict. It's called an impeachment. And the Senate has the constitutional authority to sit as a jury to try and uh, the, the indictment and either to convict or to uh, exonerate the person impeached. Right. And that impeachment doesn't just apply to the president and the vice president. It applies to any officer in the United States government, not just a, a secretary, a department head, but it implies to people who are employed, particularly at senior levels. And, right. You know, look at this AP situation. Look at uh, the sending of, uh, of all the arms to the, the Mexican terrorist, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Eric Holder said, I didn't do anything. Oh, those people should have been indicted by the House of Representatives and impeached and prevented from holding any government office for the rest of their life. Then once they're impeached, then the question is, why aren't they criminally indicted? But Congress has failed yeah, countless it, times. I am so sick of Congress. And when, even when I saw Daryl Issa's committee saying, oh, we're not targeting Hillary Clinton, then what are you targeting? Why not? Why not? Was she uh, the Grand Dame Mason, high-level satanic avatar by a transdimensional 14-foot dick or reptilian <laughs> monster? You can't freaking you can't friggin impeach her? What the hell? Do we want to have Hillary's uh, Lilith, daughter of Satan himself, running as a president in 2016? If we think that Obama's bad, imagine Hillary as president. That's a oh my God! Thought. Oh my God! I mean, it, yeah, the flying witch of the West, you know, with the Wizard of Oz. Let me hey, tell you, could save us money. We could retire Air Force One. She could fly a broomstick one. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, people don't understand just how nuts this is. But you know what the problem is? That Obama is a symptom, as, as it's been said by all these pastors that talk about, including Jack Van Ippe and many other pastors and ministers. They're only a symptom of the apathy, the sin, and the lack of repentance. And sin doesn't separate you from God. The lack of repentance separates you from God. Because it doesn't matter if you've been a mass murderer or an abortionist. If you repent before the Most High, your sins are taken as far as the east from the west. God will always cleanse you if you're willing to repent, admit and repent. Even Jesus Iscariot could have saved himself, but instead he went out and hung himself. Right, and the same thing goes, by the way, of us doing corporate repentance, not for sins that we've done, but our nation, because our tax money has been paying for abortions in Kenya, the home country oh, yeah. of the abominator. It's paying for murders of people in Syria. It's paying for the eyes being gouged out of priests in Syria because we support Al Qaeda. It's paying for the the rape of of young girls in in uh, under the Morsi government in Cairo because our government is so evil, as I said in other times. There is no nation on earth that has been both more good and more evil than America. There is no nation that has ever existed that has done more good or more evil than America. Pray for the repentance. Pray now. Fall down, cry out for the Most High God, because if thousands of us, millions of us do this, maybe there's a chance that we can turn the tide back. Maybe we can impeach not only Obama, but all these monsters. Maybe we can avert, like Nineveh, the disaster that's coming, because it's at the doors. It's at the doors now.